All right, so the difference between 25.1 and 25.2 is that we are dealing with inequalities today. There's a lot of overlap, but then there's some extra work that you have to do kind of on the back end of inequalities that you don't have to do with equals. So when you're taking a unit test, you really wanna be careful to watch your signs. Obviously, when you're in 25.1, it's it was just equal signs, 25.2 is just inequalities, but when you get to an indicator 25 quiz, or a unit test, there's gonna be a mix of the two. So you just have to really be careful when it's equals, you do what you did yesterday. And when it's inequalities, we do a few different things. So I'm gonna give you the kind of the very, very loose layout in words. I want you to write down the steps and then um, we will talk about and kind of put them into play. So step one is the same as yesterday. We find the vertex. Okay, that's the same as yesterday. And we find that using the x equals negative b over 2a. And then you plug in, not quite sure why I did that. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, you find the vertex using the same equation as yesterday. You plug it in, you find your y, and you plot your vertex, OK? You still draw your axis of symmetry. I'm going to abbreviate here because this is all review. You still pick second point and plot. You plot your mirror point. Okay, that is all review. You find your vertex and plot it. You draw your axis of symmetry. You pick your second point. You obviously do all the math to find it. Then you plot it, and then you plot your mirror point. All right, if you want to give yourself a little squiggly line, that's where the similarities stop. So now, instead of just drawing the U-shaped graph, okay, before you do that, you have to ask yourself, dashed or solid? Okay, that's the question you have to ask yourself. And what determines dashed or solid is your inequality sign. For dashed, it's going to be the less than or the greater than sign, meaning that when you draw your U, you're gonna dash it instead of make it a solid line. A solid line is gonna be for your less than or greater than or equal to's. Okay, that's what's gonna determine whether or not you're gonna dash it or make it a solid line. Obviously the solid line will look like yesterday's, okay? Uh, the dashed line will look a bit different. And then step six is you have to shade. And we will, I'll show you how to determine which direction you shade here in just a second. So the first four steps, totally a repeat. Once you get all your points plotted, that's where you have to kind of change gears just a hair to adjust for inequalities. So let's do number one here. So step one is I find my vertex. So I'm gonna use, uh, let's actually, let's name our A, B, and C. I didn't put that in the steps, but you always wanna do that, just get in the habit of that. My A here is negative one, my B is a two, and my C is a three. So using that, I've got X equals, negative b or negative two over two times negative one. And that gives me negative two over negative two, which equals a positive one. So my vertex x is a one. And now I am going to find my vertex y by plugging in. So when you're plugging in to find your y's, I don't care if you use equals or inequalities, it doesn't change how you find your y, all right? So sometimes I forget and I get lazy and I put equals. It doesn't hurt anything in this part, all right? So I've got y is greater than, so I've got negative one squared plus two times one plus three. Now you gotta be really careful with PEMDAS here, okay? First, you're going to square one, which is still positive one. Then you're going to multiply times a negative. So it still stays a negative one. Got to be careful. Do the power first, then apply that negative. And really, it's not there, but it's really negative one times. That's why we multiply it times negative one. Okay. Um, 
plus two plus three gives me four. So my vertex is one, four. So I'm gonna plot the point one, four, and I'm gonna draw in my axis of symmetry. And I'm gonna check my C rule to see if it works. When I plug in a zero, I get my C, which is three. Awesome. My second point worked. So my second point is zero, three. I can plot that. Because I have an axis of symmetry, I can count one, two, go to the other side, one, two, and you erase those slash marks. I just put them there so you can see where I'm looking at. So I can mirror my third point across the axis. This is where it gets a little different. Now I'm going to, before I draw my U, I'm gonna ask myself, am I gonna draw a dashed U or a solid U? And the way you answer that is by your inequality sign. If it does not have a line underneath it, it's dashed. If it has a line underneath it, the way I kind of remember it, a line underneath makes a solid line, okay? So when you do this, you just kind of, like I said, I don't expect you guys to be Picassos here, but just kind of start giving yourself a dashed and go all the way, all the way the expanse of your graph. And there's a reason for that on inequalities. You don't want a little bitty inequality, or you don't want a little bitty quadratic here. All right, so that is step five, which was deciding between dashed and solid. I went ahead and plotted it. Now, the last step, I promise you, I do this every year and every year this trips people up, all right? If you will do it the way I show you, it is super simple and you never have to question where to shade, okay? But it's, and it's kind of a, it's not weird, but it's just, it's a fail safe way, um, but you can do it or you can not do it this way, but this is, this is the way I teach my students how to do it. I take my pencil, okay? And I literally lay it on my paper and I'm going to show you here on my y axis, which is right here. Okay, that's my y axis. I'm going to take my pencil and right where my U, whether it's a dashed or solid, right where my U shape crosses the y axis. That's the only important point on this entire graph that matters. I'm going to set my pencil down there and I'm going to rest my pencil and I'm not going to pick it up. Okay. With my pencil touching my y-axis, I'm gonna look up at my equation and I'm gonna read it, all y's, and it's a greater than sign because the opening is facing the y, all y's greater than my pencil, okay? It doesn't matter what the rest of that equation says, okay? It's all y's greater than my pencil. Well, on the y-axis, make a squiggly line on the y's that are greater than where your pencil is. And that's these, way, these y's right here, right? Those are the y's that are greater than where my pencil was sitting. Everybody agree with that? Is that squiggly line trapped inside or outside of my u? So everything outside gets shaded. <clears throat> if you will use the y-axis pencil trick, shading becomes extremely easy, okay? You just have to use that idea. Are we good? All right, so I'm going to kind of go quickly through the first four steps here as far as the plotting because we've you should be pretty good with all of this. So I'm going to roll pretty quick through the first few steps. So I'm going to label my a oops, I'm sorry, my a here is a half, my b is a 4, my c is a 7. So for my vertex, I've got x equals negative four over two times one half, which is negative four over one, which is negative four. So my vertex x is a negative four. I'm gonna plug it in. I've got one half times negative four squared plus four times negative four plus seven. PEMDAS says that I square negative four first, which is negative four times negative four, which is positive 16. And then four times negative four is negative 16 plus seven, take half of 16. And I get that my vertex Y is a negative one. 
okay? Plot my vertex, negative four, negative one, plot it, draw my axis of symmetry, check my X or my C rule. It doesn't work here because the point would be zero seven. That does not fit on my graph, okay? It's too far over. So I'm gonna pick, uh, I'm gonna be mindful here. I'm gonna, ha I have a half. So I'm not gonna pick three or five because that's gonna give me nine or 25. And I don't wanna take half of either one of those numbers. So for my second point, right? This is my second point. I'm gonna pick a negative two, okay? So let's plug it in. One half of negative two squared plus four times negative two plus seven. I'm gonna square negative two first, which is gonna give me positive four minus eight plus seven, half of four is two. I know I'm going through this part rather quick, but I hopefully you guys are pretty good with plugging and chugging through getting some of these, these points uh, out here. Uh, so two minus eight is negative six plus seven is one. So my, whoops, I didn't really leave enough room there. So for my second point, I picked a negative two and it produced a Y of one. So I'm gonna plot negative two, one, and I'm gonna go over the same amount on the other side, and there is my parabola. Is this gonna, one gonna be dashed or solid? Solid, so I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a nice fat U, and I'm gonna extend it all the way to the other side. And what I really wanna make sure is that I cross the Y axis, right? That's my important point, because now I'm gonna take my pencil, and I don't even put a dot or put a point there, it's fine. Rest your pencil where your U crosses the Y axis, leave it there, and then look at the equation. It's all Y's less than my pencil. Well, on the Y axis, put a squiggly line. These are the Y's that are less than your pencil, trapped inside or outside. So you shade all of the area outside. Now I wanna do one example with you where you've gotta get a little creative with the y-axis trick, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. So flip over to the back side, and let's look at number three. Doesn't matter, they're both almost identical. All right, so for number three, I'm gonna start out the same. I'm gonna find my vertex. And I'm going to do X equals, let's see, my A here is a 2, my B is a 16, my C is a 35. All right, so negative 16 over 2 times 2 equals negative 16 over 4, which equals negative 4. So my X of my vertex is a negative 4. <coughs> Plug it into my equation, I've got 2 negative four squared plus 16 times negative four plus 35. Again, I tell you guys this all the time, numbers get really big, but then they should all boil down to really small. If not, you've made a sign error. Two times negative four squared is positive 16. 16 times negative four is negative 64, is that right? Yes, minus 64 plus 35. Two times 16 is 32. And so we have 32 minus 64 plus 35, all boils down to a nice neat little three. So negative four, three is my vertex. I'm gonna draw my axis of symmetry. Now the zero rule doesn't work because that point would be zero 35, right? And that's too far off my graph. So I'm gonna pick negative two as my second point. So I'm gonna go two times negative two squared plus 16 times negative two plus 35. I'm gonna square negative two first, which gives me a positive four. Two times eight is, or two times four is eight. And that gives me, I know I'm running fast through this part because this is the part where we just find the points, I think we're good there. All right, so my second point is negative 2, 11. So negative 2, 11 is right here. 
and I'm going to mirror across and I'm going to decide dashed or solid. Sorry, I was just looking at something real quick. Dashed or solid here. All right, here's where I say you gotta get creative. On the graph that I have visible on my paper, my U is not going to cross my Y axis, right? So just extend the Y axis up just a little bit, okay? Because we know it goes up forever. And now I'm gonna do a dashed U. So I'm going to dash my U. And when I get here, up here off my graph, I'm going to go ahead and kind of, I know it, it doesn't really bend like that, but I'm just going to get it over there because I just need a place to put my pencil. Nathan? Um, is it okay to draw a solid line with it parts of it? As long as you erase parts of it and I can tell that you went to make it a solid line, I'm fine with that, okay? So notice what I did when I went off my graph. Yes, I know my parabola kind of took a curve and that's okay because it's off my graph. All I really care about is having a place to rest my pencil right on the y-axis. So I'm gonna place my pencil up here, okay? Right on the y-axis. And then I'm gonna look at the equation and it's all y's greater than my pencil. Well, that's these y's up here. And even though it's off, if you think about it, look, what would your parabola keep doing? It would keep, oh, are you kidding me? Sorry. Your parabola would keep going on forever, right? So it's gonna keep crossing your y-axis. Is my, even though it's off my graph, it, are my squiggly, is my squiggly part trapped inside or outside? So now I'm gonna go back to my graph and I'm gonna shade inside. So even if your parabola, even if you got to get a little creative to give yourself that y axis, you still want to get your y axis. I'm sorry, you still want you to get your graph to cross the y axis, because that is going to be your pivotal point of deciding whether you're shading inside or outside. Make sense? Are we good? Okay. For those of you at home, um, go ahead and click on the load button on Cami. Email me if you have any questions.